Masterclass Lessons in Life and Leadership from Sergeant Major Peter All of the U.S. Marine Corps. Welcome to Profile. I'm Ian Boyne. Sergeant Major, welcome back. Good to have you again on the set. There are so many critical lessons that one can apply from the, the military to everyday life. And one of these key lessons is how to deal with situations of chaos and uncertainty, situations of unpredictability. What are some of the lessons you have, you have learned? Well, I will tell you, Chaos and uncertainty is the environment that the U.S. Marine Corps creates in its officer candidate screening process in Quantico. And the thought process, I believe, is that whenever you're caused to make a decision under those circumstances, that tells us about your makeup, your character mm -hmm. as a leader. You know, anyone can make a simple decision if the conditions are perfect, right? right? Of but course. you sprinkle some chaos and some uncertainty, Absolutely. that's how you're going to see the true leader. You yeah. know, can he or she make that decision in those times under duress? And that is what we look for, those who can make the decisions under those circumstances. Yes. And you've, you've taught at the academy? Yeah. Um, I, I have been an instructor at Officer Candidate School in Quantico, Virginia. I was there on staff for four years. I've also been an instructor at their Leadership Academy in Okinawa, Japan, and also a drill instructor. So I, uh -huh. From uh, from the enlistment, uh, from the enlisted side, where they are what we call the non-commissioned officer, their leadership development. Uh, I've been in that space, and with the officer accessions program and screening officer candidates, I've been in that space also. And in screening uh, officer candidates, what are the primary things you look for? Okay, so the Marine Corps has these core values: you know, honor, courage, and commitment. And, and those are the baseline principles and the foundations. We also have the leadership traits and leadership principles. There's yes. 14 of them. So you know, talk about judgment, judgment, decisiveness. You know, we talk about those character traits. Yes. You know, that's what we look for in those officer candidates. Not only do we look for those character traits, we also look for their decision-making ability. You know, you got to be able to make a decision. You know, anyone can sit down and strategize, but who's going to make that decision? I don't want to make the decision, but make the right decision at the right time. Mm -hmm. So we'll look for all those things, and hopefully at the end of the day, we don't always get it right, but we're pretty close to getting it right mm -hmm. as far as those of we select. Right? And it's a very, very good process. Yes, yes. And your, your days uh, in Brook Valley, uh, Sherlock Crescent, in Duane Park, would have prepared you well. Well, for the, for the Navy. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I will tell you, uh, growing up in Brook Valley and Sherlock, what, it, what it's done for me is make me more aware of some of the things that you would come across in life mm -hmm. and some of the things that are not so nice. And so when I experience certain things, I, you know, I, I've, I have a reference point to go back to. You know, from whether it's crime or violence, uh, you know, how to deal with someone who's not in a good position. I've learned those things. So when I experience certain things, for example, when we're deployed in combat, you know, if I, you know, came across death, it, yeah. it really, it really doesn't affect me that much. So even though I may be empathetic and maybe some sympathy, yeah. I do realize the environment that I'm in, and that as a leader, I need to be able to lead. So there is some channeling of those emotions and and I think we have to learn how to do that you know it's okay it's okay to be to be um, in sorrow it's okay for you to yes. grieve but oftentimes we have to know when to do it and who to do it in front of because it will affect folks if you're in a leadership position so that, so that one has to learn to regulate his emotions yeah I think so that, major. Yeah, there's got to be some government because of your it, own emotions you are in, in combat one of the 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 values inculcated in the Marine Corps is uh, uh, duty toward fellow members of the, uh, of the Corps, uh, uh, caring for them. Uh, and yet, in combat, if you lose uh, uh, members of the, the team, you can't just be, be thrown off by your emotions. You have to realize that you, you, you still have your, your task at hand. And sometimes you just have to push on and continue doing them 
before giving attention to your grief. How, right. how, how, right. how well, does one navigate that? Well, the mission is the mission, you know, mission and, and, and one thing you learn as a Marine is that we have mission accomplishment and we have troop welfare. The mission is never ever going to be compromised. The mission will be accomplished. But we're also not going to leave our dead or our wounded Marines on the battlefield. We'll take care of them also. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to that private time, that private time for you to properly grieve, we, we, we allocate that time for ourselves. But we're not going to do it to the jeopardy of the mission. The mission will be accomplished. So, so, so the mission is primary? The mission will be accomplished. <laughs> the mission will be accomplished. The mission will be accomplished. It will be. And so that people have to learn in, in, in life, um, Sergeant Major, that we should not allow ourselves to be derailed by the things that happen, by the things that life throw up. We have to always remember what we are about. And we have to maintain our focus. Maintain the focus. And see, and that's one of the things I spoke about at Calabar this morning, you know, when I would go back for my, you know, my monthly mentoring sessions with, with the boys, you know, they have exams coming up. Yes, yes. Let's understand that we're all going to have things going on in our lives. Precisely. Whether it's in the home front or whether it's your school, personal relationships. Mm -hmm. But the main reason why we're here is to gain that education. And if they have exams coming up, that should be the primary focus, to do well in the exams, study, prepare for them, be responsible, hold yourself accountable. Do not shift the responsibility to anyone else. Take ownership of it. We control our emotions. We can control our emotions. We control our emotions. Nobody else. It doesn't matter what is happening on the we external. Control, we control our emotions. We just got to learn how to control them. Yes. But so often, Sergeant Major, we feel that the external circumstances are so overweening that we are compelled to respond in a, in a certain way. We are, we are compelled to, to react. Talk to us about that. Well, you know, there's a thing that I call, you know, we have to have some self-governance of our self-discipline. Yes, yes. You know, we do what we tell ourselves or allow ourselves to do. And oftentimes that is because we lose focus. True. So we have to be a master of our own existence. Mm -hmm. We have to control it. It's difficult. It takes practice. And if you're easily swayed, and if you're not resolute in your actions, you will be swayed. That's true. And, 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 and this is where the, the aspect of the commitment in the, the Marine Corps um, fundamental values comes in. One has to be so deeply and solidly committed to the mission that irrespective of what is happening, one is pushing ahead with right. that mission. And, and, and that's a small part of it. So not only are you committed to uh, completing the task, right, executing the mission, but you're also committed to having faith in your leadership. You're also committed to having faith in your fellow Marines that they will do their jobs also. Yes. So it's a big team concept. It's not just getting the job done. Yes, yeah, getting the job done, but understand that you're going to be provided the best leadership that there is. You're going to have trust in your leadership, and you're going to trust your fellow Marines to get the job done. We have a problem with trust in Jamaica. Uh, I'm quite sure we do. <laughs> and, um, and I'm quite sure that... So, so, here, so here's an interesting thing. Yeah. Jamaica's a very, lot of very, very smart people. Well educated, very, very smart. Yes. And I've added this. But also smart, smart in the Nancy sense, you know. Peter. Well, 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 true. Who, who true. Are, who are generals. True, true. And true. that's why we can't trust a lot of them. You know, so. you know, you know quite so. And, and, but, but there are some good ones out there, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of the missing link is, is leadership. It really and truly is leadership, yes. you know. Yes. And through good leadership, you know, for lack of better terms, that's how you generate and garner the trust of oh, your subordinates. Uh -huh. And that, I think, is going to be the, con the conduit between, you know, those who we serve and those who are being served, the leadership and the subordinates. We have to have that trust. And you gain that trust over time through how you treat people as a leader. You look out for their welfare. You know, be concerned about them. You know, it's okay to tell somebody happy birthday. It really is okay. You know, and as a leader, you should know those things. You should know the birthdays. You should yeah. know the anniversaries. Yes. You, should, you should know all those things. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. Yes. They may be having that bad day, and that the th you remember that it was their birthday or their anniversary. That means a lot. It means a lot to them. And that's how folks start trusting you. You say, you know what? It's hard here. A hard work we do. But they trust us. They believe in us. And when they're struggling, you help. It's okay to help. 
doesn't mean you have to sit behind your desk. You can come from behind the desk. It's okay. Yes. You can go help out too. Yes. You know, that's why we call it, you know, it's a cohesive team. And the moment we fail to understand and accept that reality that we're part of a team, it's not us and them, and it's not just about me, the individual, we'll be in a whole lot better place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's lacking here. Yes. I, I think it's lacking, so well, I'm talking about it. Well, but that's why it's important to have this program where we can give some key leadership lessons. Uh, Sergeant Major Peter Hall is here with us again, and he's imparting some critical leadership lessons. We're going to get to um, uh, some of them when we come back from our first break in Profile.